What's going on guys, in this video I'll be showing you how to install the PSP1000 internal HDMI kit from High Speed IDEO. This mod kit is only compatible with PSP1000 model consoles and requires complete removal of both the optical drive and the IR transceiver, meaning when this modification is complete, you'll no longer have a functioning optical drive or infrared transceiver. To complete this installation, you're going to need a few things. A fine tip soldering iron, some solder and preferably some no clean flux. You'll also need some flush cut snips and a small amount of insulating tape. Along with that, you'll need a small Phillips head screwdriver, as well as a pry tool. If your kit does not include it, you'll also need some 30 gauge wrapping wire. And this last one is optional, but makes for a cleaner install, and that is a file or some fine grit sandpaper. Okay, with all of that out of the way, let's get started. Begin by removing any disks from the console, as well as checking you have removed the memory card from the system if you have one. Now go ahead and remove the battery and battery cover. In the battery compartment there are four screws, two of which are hidden under the warranty seal. Two of the four screws are short machine screws, and the other two are longer thread rolling screws. It is important not to mix any screws up in the system, as doing so may cause irreparable damage to the mainboard or LCD. Next, moving along to the bottom of the machine, locate and remove the single long machine screw from the base of the console. Now on the right hand side of the console, remove the two remaining thread rolling screws. Now with the housing screws removed, we can flip the console over and gently pry the faceplate off, being careful not to damage the casing. With the faceplate off, unclip the front panel button assembly. This assembly is held in on both ends by metal retention clips. The assembly freed, gently turn it over to reveal the FFC connector. To open up this connector and remove the flat flex cable, gently lift the black compression bar upward and slide the flat flex cable smoothly out. Next, it's time to remove the LCD panel. Please take note of the no-go zones around the LCD, as putting pressure on these points is likely to damage the screen. The LCD is held in by metal retention clips, much like the front panel button assembly. It is recommended to unfasten the top of the display first, and then lift the screen upwards. With the display in a sturdy upright position, gently remove the display and backlight flex cables by carefully unfastening both of the FFC connectors like before. With the display removed, we can move forward to detaching the optical drive assembly. To start, disconnect the two optical drive flat flex cables. One is a compression bar like previously, whilst the other uses a sliding bar mechanism. To open this connector, using your tweezers, slide both sides of the retention clip away from the connector and slide out the flex like shown. After this, flip the console back over, taking your pry tool and inserting it into the space between the housing and the drive door like shown. Now, bend the tool away and upwards from the drive to unclip the door like shown. Next, remove the four screws shown on screen. Please keep aside at least two of the screws along with their vibration gaskets for later. The rest of the drive and screws can be omitted from the system. Please however keep the plastic drive door. Next it's time to remove the mid-frame assembly that was holding the LCD in place. This assembly uses both types of screws with varying lengths. Please take note of which screw goes where. With this in mind, the following fasteners will not be reinstalled into the console after modification. Now go ahead and remove the mid-frame assembly. Please be aware the left button assembly needs to be unscrewed and shifted slightly in order to easily remove the assembly. Do not move this button assembly too far as it is still attached to the main board. Now with the mid-frame removed, disconnect the following connectors. Please be aware that the speaker cables and DC jack may be difficult to remove and care needs to be taken not to damage them. Following this, remove the thread rolling screw in the top right of the motherboard. To remove the mainboard, first lift the right hand side up a few millimetres and gently bend the housing away to free the USB jack. Next start lifting the left hand side of the board to detach the connector that is hidden on the opposite side of the motherboard. After the board is removed, we need to prepare the housing for modification. To do this, temporarily remove these two screws. Now simply remove the RF shield along with this smaller ground strap and then put the screws back into the housing through the sub-PCB. These two metal pieces won't be put back into the machine and can be thrown away. With the housing cleared of obstructions, we can begin the alterations. Using your snips, cut away sections shown on the screen now.
Optionally, you can also file down the cut edges for a cleaner look. With the housing prepared, it's time to move back over to the main board. First, we need to remove the infrared transceiver. You can either desolder it like I am, or carefully break it off the board with your snips. I highly recommend using the first method, as that has the least risk of damaging the main board. With the transceiver removed, place a small amount of insulating tape over the exposed PCB. Now moving down to the speaker connection area of the board. Solder three wires to the following points. It is recommended to tin both these connections and the wires with some solder first, then trimming the wires a little and adding some flux to them, as this will make soldering much easier. Please keep note of which wire is soldered where, for when we attach them to the HDMI board later. Now, with the alterations complete, reinstall the main board back into the housing, making sure the new wires don't get caught up in the mid-frame assembly. Before placing the mid-frame down, make sure to leave the left side button assembly unscrewed for now. As this button assembly has interfacing pins that slide into the mid-frame, we need to allow some slack when screwing the mid-frame into the housing. Now, just reinstall the following screws. Keep in mind the screw layout from before. With the mid-frame secured, slide the left side button assembly into place and fasten it down. Following this, flip the console back over and slide the HDMI board into place like shown. Then solder in the three wires for audio and stick down the touch sensor plate here. This touch sensor is used to change the aspect ratio of the display over HDMI when using the system. Next, take your screws and gaskets from before and secure the board in place, ready for the next step. Now, take your LCD extension cable that came with your HDMI kit and install it into the LCD FFC connector like shown. After this, slide the other end of the flex cable through the console like what's shown on the screen. The other end of the flat flex cable simply connects to the HDMI board as pictured. Now, moving back over to the LCD, connect the LCD flex cable and backlight cable as shown, keeping in mind how the new flex assembly must be folded to fit under the display. Next, clip the LCD back in place and reconnect the front button assembly. All that's left now is to clip and screw the faceplate back in place, whilst keeping in mind the screw types from the beginning of this guide. And the last two things are, fasten down the last screw on the base of the console, along with clipping the old drive door back into place. And there you have it. You've successfully installed the high speed IDEO HDMI kit into your PSP 1000. If you need any help, please leave a comment down below and don't forget to like and subscribe for more guides like this one. Until next time, see ya!